When he was previously president of the United States, Donald Trump described the European Union as a foe and threatened to make Europeans pay for U.S. protection. Now his America First policy could once again reshape transatlantic relations. For many European politicians, the possibility of Donald Trump's return to the White House is a nightmare scenario, even though they don't like to speak about it in front of a camera. Surely you're not inviting me to interfere in the internal affairs of our uh, biggest ally. It's um, the people in, in America who, who have the right to choose their president. In private, however, one diplomat described the atmosphere to us as a mixture of desperation and resignation. And it seems pretty clear that behind closed doors, officials in European capitals are working on contingency plans should there be a second Donald Trump presidency. I'm sure that there are contingency plans. They're not going to wait until the last moment. The advantage that they have is Trump is not anymore, unlike what was the case in 2016, 2017, is not an unknown person anymore. During his first term in office, Trump imposed tariffs on trade with EU members. He pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement and in what was the biggest shock, he repeatedly questioned the US commitment to the NATO alliance. Now he is delivering the same messages on the campaign trail. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, no, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. So could a second Trump presidency mean the end of NATO? It's not just about whether the United States is in or out. I mean, almost certainly the United States would stay in. But there are, there are levels of being in. And uh, other allies on occasion have, have sought lower levels of involvement with NATO, withdrawing from the integrated military command, for example, or simply, um, simply focusing on areas uh, outside of the European security orbit, which would leave Europe uh, in a position of having to, to sort of somehow fill that gap. Could Europe fill that gap? Not in the short term. Experts say NATO without the US would be weak. Europe's nuclear deterrence without American nuclear weapons inconceivable, at least for now. And supporting Ukraine without money and arms from Washington would be much more difficult. So what can EU leaders do? No matter what will happen in the US, um, Europe has to be able to do more on our own and in uh, cooperation with our allies. This is a wake-up call for, for everybody in, in Europe to do more for, uh, for European own defense. Doing more for European security could help, but it will take time for countries to be able to do that. A European Union army first discussed decades ago is still a distant endeavor. And in the meantime? If one looks at the experience of the Trump administration that we had, uh, clearly he views the world not just through nation states, but through individual leaderships, individual leaders, I can say. Not so much alliances, not so much agreements, sometimes not even states, but, but individuals. And so those individual relationships uh, matter. Building relationships, stepping up on defense, Europeans are bracing for Trump 2.0. And they know that a new phase in the transatlantic relationship might be looming anyway, regardless of who will win the race to the White House.